Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, women and children of all ages, today we're working on blue. So I want to start getting some of the parts thrown back on the car. I can't really start on wiring quite yet until probably tomorrow. Kyle just came and he picked up the charge piping for right here and the downpipe to do some finished welding on those. I want to start playing with the wiring harness, but I can't map it out until I have everything in the engine base so that way I know where I need to route the harness. Um, that'll dictate wire length and everything like that. Last night I got the coil packs ordered for the car, so we're using R35 GTR coil packs. I just bought OEM Nissan ones. They're like the perfect length for this engine. So I ordered six of them. I think they're like $78 each, not terrible in price. I got them from Concept Z Performance. When I had my old 350, I used to order parts from them all the time. Really good company. Kyle also dropped off both of the dump tubes for the wastegates. So we are using two tile 38 millimeter wastegates, as you guys know. So we have two dump tubes, one for each wastegate. Not gonna worry about those either. I got the bumper put back on the car permanently. So now, uh, a couple things I wanna do. I wanna get this APR splitter off of that bumper. I don't plan on running it. I'll probably post it up for sale. So that splitter is going to come off the bumper. I want to get the carpet back in the car. I want to get the Sparco seat bolted in. Um, I might put the dash back in, but I kind of want to hold off on doing the dash till I have the hall tech. I need the dash in to be able to communicate with the BIU. The way that the immobilizer works in the car is the BIU, the ECU, and the cluster all communicate together. With one of those components missing, it's not going to talk to each other properly. Let's get the splitter off this bumper first because I just I want that thing off. The bumper you should just pull right off. Look at that. Well, that was the dumbest thing to take off, but it is off. I forgot how well I mounted that splitter to that lip. So those are both for sale. I just want them out the garage. By the time you see this, those are probably gonna already be sold. Uh, so now that I've got the bumper situation taken care of and I've gotten that splitter off, I've been wanting to do that for a little while. Uh, I think I'm gonna jump up here and getting the carpet in next. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and push old blue out a little bit, grab the carpet up there, drag it down, and then start finoodling it to get it back in the car. And then we may throw the seat in after that, or I may just leave it carpeted. Well, actually, before I do that, I should probably run through here and make sure that all of the electrical grounds are plugged in in here, uh, just to double check. So I think we'll do that first. Yeah, let's do that first. Let's double check electrical before I throw this carpet in. Last thing I want to do is get all this stuff in there um, and then electrical will be kind of like messed up. I just kind of want to make sure it's all good down along the bottoms, make sure there's no grounds that we missed. All right, so I want to do a quick pass through in here just to make sure that all my grounds are on. Um, the carpet's probably going to come up to about here, so I just want to make sure that all this, this is all hall tech stuff, so for now, that can all get tucked away. I think I pretty much got all this last time I came through here and made sure all the grounds are good, at least down here in this area. So over here is like the big area. I have OBD2 right here for can. All of that is plugged in, all of that's plugged in, everything down here looks good. I remember trying to reconnect all these wires, it was such a pain in the butt. Everything looks like it's still plugged in and there's no loose grounds down here, at least under where the carpet's going to be, uh, which is the main focus and the main priority at the second. So, the carpet put back in here so that way it looks a little less um, stripped. Ah! It all just fell on me! But, so surprisingly enough, the carpet's actually not as bad to put in as you might think. It's pretty self-explanatory, to be honest. We got that side right there. That side that goes up there. It's just getting it to where it needs to go. That kind of sucks. I don't remember where the foam went. Oh, dude, it's like lined up perfectly over here now. Yo, it looks so much less daunting with everything that I've actually put in here now. And quite the pain in the ass. Now, isn't it? It is. Das carpet does not want to go back in. So that looks pretty good. It does. That hasn't been in here in forever. The e-brake boot on there. Ooh, reminiscing. It's kind of, I can't wait till this thing's done again, dude. Yo, my sunglasses! My Smedia mask! Let's test fit the seat in here, because that's my next thing that I want to see. Alright, she in. Ugh. Dude, I haven't sat in an actual seat in this car in so long. <laughs> yes! This is glorious. Oh my God, I can't wait till she's alive. I love it! I still need a new windshield. But sitting in, oh my God, dude. 
This brings back so many memories of Blue. Blue, how you doing, baby girl? You're gonna be great. You're gonna live again. And you're gonna be the scariest thing I've ever owned. And I cannot wait. This seat sits incredibly low. Holy hell. Yo, seeing a seat in here and actually like sitting in it and like holding the wheel and like getting backward like this just gets me so excited to get this project going. So I just wanted to get the carpet in here, get the seat in here to free up some room back in this back of the garage so that way I had some more room. Um, like I said, I can't really go on wiring too much right now. There's not too much I can do up in the engine bay until Kyle drops off those other parts. So I may have to postpone that. I need to tap into ignition on the uh, button over there. So that way, cause this is this pink wire right here is our ignition wire for the the hall tech and I need to find a place to find like to mount this box this is like all the fuses for the hall tech and everything like that um, I have it all already re like ran through here that connectors for the can communication system which that's another thing that I need to order and buy um, a lot of the stuff that I'm getting for the car right now is all wiring and sensor stuff it's not really the most exciting but it is what it is um, this this carpet just does not want to like go back in like where it originally came from and that's fine like it's, it's there for the most part once the seats in here you won't even notice like that little like weird crumple in it uh but dude i'm so pumped so pumped just that alone makes me excited so it's just a standard sparko sprint um it's nothing fancy but just like looking at the cockpit right here oh my god dude i can't wait i, I literally cannot wait to drive this thing i don't want to push the i don't want to put the dash in quite yet because i know i'm gonna have to get up here into those wires above the dash um the dash is also a huge pain to put back in like take in put out like in out in out in out whatnot what else can i do i can get the new alternator thrown in i'm trying to think of things i could do that aren't working around the wiring stuff right now so let's actually get our good alternator in here from dc engineering uh we'll We'll get that one set aside if anybody needs an alternator. Actually, you know, I'll probably give it to Matt for mittens. So let's get our good alternator in there. Get this alternator out of here. I'm just trying to get like all this smaller stuff that I have like sitting around done with. So that way we're not like stressing it. That's not even stressing it, but just so I have more room around the garage. You will come off as I try to not crush my hand. The alpha lock, there we go. We're gonna go in right like that. Where'd I put that bolt? There it is. Look at that, just go. Oh my god, where'd you go? Where'd you go? I miss you so. So I think that's about where I have to stop right now until Kyle comes back with the rest of the components. I just, I want to start on this harness. I just can't until I have everything in here so that way I can map all of this out. So after he's done like finishing welding, they should be back tonight. Uh, we can get the rest of the downpipe in so that way I know where I can map the harness over there. I need this charge pipe in right here and then I need to get that catch can system mounted in the back so that way I can see. The biggest one is the catch can so that way I know where I can put the harness back here so we'll see you guys in a couple hours after Kyle drops that stuff off so it's the next day and I have some updates before we get back to work so uh, Kyle dropped off the catch can you guys can see it kind of back there I'll show you guys that in a second uh, I kind of went on a buying spree ordering a lot of stuff that we need for the car so I went ahead and I bought Haltex IC7 digital dash display for the car so we're not going to be using the stock STI gauge cluster in this we're going to be using a digital dash from Haltech that's going to make it so that way we don't have to run a boost gauge an air fuel ratio gauge all of these separate gauges we can have everything on one single dash in front of us it's just going to make life easier it's going to make things a lot cleaner in there for wiring as well. I also ordered the passenger seat for the car, so I just ordered another Sparco Sprint. I got the mounting bracket for that. I've got the crank position sensor ordered, both of the knock sensors, the turbo blanket, the turbo screen, and there's more stuff. I don't remember, I just ordered, oh, the coil packs. I think I already told you guys that, the R35 GTR coil packs. Um, there's a lot of stuff on the way for this. So back here, we have our catch can in here. So this mounts up in two different places. We're gonna have one breather coming off the, the catch can right there going to this head. That breather is going to go to that head, and then we're going to do uh, just a vent to atmosphere for the crankcase, I believe. Um, I'm still figuring out how I want to do that. The intake manifold, we're doing revisions on this, so Kyle's going to cut all of these runners off. We're just not happy with this, um, so he's going to redo it. He's going to make it a lot more round. He's going to make it more plenum shaped um, than this this one so uh plus it needs revisions anyways because the alternator doesn't fully go up there right now so the intake manifold is going to be coming off going back down to fuse now i can start on the wiring but i'm going to keep on the wiring off because now i'm waiting on sheathing and everything like that to come in we could technically start doing a harness map to see where we want to let like everything go uh, but i think i'm going to jump more on the fuel system side of things i'm going to go ahead and get both of these feed 
uh, lines made for the fuel system just to kind of wrap that up right there. I still need to order a fuel filter for under the car. I'll probably order that tonight. Um, but for now, uh, let's knock out a couple feed lines real quick. Those are going to be easy. They're just two dash eight nineties going to the straight fitting that's underneath of the manifold. Actually, just kidding on some stuff. I just found that I had already bought the fuel filter. So I have the dash eight fuel filter there. I have our dash six ethanol sensor there, a flex fuel sensor. I've got a lot of the AN fittings that I needed. I have this mount for something. Um, don't know. I guess I have already have the fuel filter holder for that. Um, we have the it headlight intake duct for the turbo. So we need to cut the headlight up. I found the four port boost controller, the coolant overflow, uh, some more radium stuff, electrical connectors. I had more of this laying around than I thought. Dope. Let's get some fuel lines made up. thread on right there right perfect look at that beautiful the angle of this fitting just doesn't let me get my an wrench in there Remember your safety glasses. We got pit vipers this time. Through there. Screw onto our fuel rail. And screw onto our fuel feed. So I got the fuel feed done in here. So we have our custom dash eight line coming up under the car, coming up going to this Y fitting that then Ys off feeds one side of the fuel rail and feeds the other side. And then for return, I have this return line already going back down to the fuel pressure regulator. I need to do the return right here. I just got the fitting for that. I've had the fitting for it. I just haven't used it yet. So I'm going to knock out that last return line. And then the one that I still need to do, I need to take this one off the back of the fuel pressure regulator down here. So we're going to have that return line going to the fuel pressure regulator. Then the fuel pressure regulator is probably going to wrap around somewhere over here where we're going to have our ethanol sensor. So we are just using a GM ethanol ethanol sensor. It's the exact same one that Cobb uses. I just need a bracket to be able to mount this. So I'll probably mount it maybe on the fuse box or something. I don't quite know where I'm going to put this yet, um, but I can go ahead. I can get that return line done right there. And then we just have the last return line from the ethanol sensor up to the hard line going back to the radiums in the fuel tank. And then underneath of the car, the last thing that I have to do down there is just get this guy in. I just need a smaller one of these because that's way too big for that. So I'm not going to, not going to stress about mounting it the fuel filter today. It's just kind of knocking out the small stuff that I've had sitting around in the garage on the car today um, and clearing out some space for more parts coming. Now on the breathers on the valve cover. So we are using dash 10 fittings on here. I have this, this is the only dash 10 fitting I have right now. It's a 90. This is not going to work. So I'm going to need like a 120 to have it come down at a steeper angle just because it's so close to the fuel rail right there that it's just not going to work. But I can use this 90 on the catch can itself. So we'll have two 90s just coming off the catch can like that. Uh, probably just route down behind the manifold right there and then go to the breathers on those. So let's lock, let's knock out one more fuel line. Let's get that small dash six one made for the return turn going back to the regulator uh, just to knock out one less thing that we have going on in here. So pretty much all the fuel lines up here are done. As I just showed you guys, feeds are done. I just got this small return done. I didn't, you guys don't need to watch me make every single fuel line. Uh, now that we have all that done, I think I wanna jump into the trunk and try to get power to our hull tech. So I have the wires over here. I'm just kidding, I changed my mind. I'm actually not gonna do that right now. I don't want to run these wires. I thought I had better wiring in the garage, I guess not. So when I go to do this, I'd actually just like to run all of these wires as I'm doing it, instead of just kind of like running it and be like, all right, it kind of works. All I have is this wire and this this is CCA wire if you don't know what that is this is copper clad aluminum it's not actually aluminum or it's not actually copper wire this is copper wire 
But this is all I have of copper wire left, so I'm gonna hold off on doing that now. I'm gonna order some actual copper wire today, so that way I'm not running around with some CCA in here. Um, as okay as copper clad aluminum wire is, I'd rather do this right with copper wire. Um, so I'm not even gonna try to test things with that. It's it's not worth my time doing. The next thing I'm actually gonna do is start mapping out this harness right here in the engine bay, so that way we have an idea of where we're gonna put brakes in the wires, where we're gonna have like intersections, and just kind of where everything's going to go because for the most part I can do this right now to get an idea and start separating wires into smaller individual bundles so that way it doesn't look like such a mess so let me just run through this for like an hour and start like wiring out where all this is gonna go can't really do anything with the mapped out harness right now and I can't map out the rest of the harness until I get the sensors I need and the mounts for those sensors because I don't know where I'm going to put them yet up until I have everything else put back in the engine bay and that's the problem that I'm running into right now because I the the last thing you want to do we're not even going to sheath any of that harness until we've confirmed that we can at least like turn the car over to get it all cleaned up because there's no point in running through here and doing all of this shit because then I have to depin every connector that I put on there so maybe we will run the harness oh I hate electrical with a passion let me show you guys what I have so far so right now up in the engine bay I've got pretty much everything mapped out so these wires here are for injectors and coil packs for cylinders one three and five this bundle right here is injectors and coil packs for cylinders two four and six as well as the cam position sensor because our cam position sensor will be right down there this main harness coming up through the front here this is our crank position sensor our iat sensor our map sensor is that guy right there and our throttle body uh, sensor guy. I still have to put it that on a DPO. Um, this is knock sensor two. That is knock sensor one down there. We have coolant temp sensor there. Uh, and then there's probably more wires somewhere else that I missed. It's just going through here. So now these two wires over here are for coil packs seven and eight if we were running an eight cylinder. However, we can use these as alternative connectors for DPO. I believe it was DPO on those ones, which is digital pulse output. This harness up here is either my I don't know pile or I can't put that anywhere because I don't have the sensors for them yet or the mounts for the sensors or I don't know where I'm putting them. So that bundle will stay up there. Uh, I have the catch can temporarily bolted up here also as you guys can see it comes in at an angle right there so that way we can actually uh and the drain will be down here on it so that way we can actually just mock up around the harness now if you guys remember from last time i don't remember if i actually showed this in the last video or not uh but i did relocate the battery and then back here we have our circuit breaker so if i turn our circuit breaker on all the relays in the car click on and whatnot and then i can come up here all of our body lighting and everything like that still works. So our headlights work, our tail lights work, our MFD, all that stuff, our windshield wipers work. Our windshield wipers work. There we go. Windshield wipers still work. Turn signals work, because those are important. And hey, the JDM turn signals still work, which is good. All illumination inside of the car work. Now to be honest, there's really not much else I can do until I get the rest of these sensors in. Uh, brackets for the sensors. Kyle, when he redoes the manifold, because I can't do anything with that intake manifold, because Kyle's cutting it off, he's redesigning the intake manifold so it's not a big square anymore. Uh, there's a lot in here that still needs to happen, but I just can't do it because I'm, I didn't have the funds to order parts up until now because Karma was such a money pit. So, a lot of the parts will be here Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, I'm gonna order some more AN fitting stuff today to get the rest of the fuel system complete at least under the car so I can get that fuel filter mounted. Uh, so it looks like I'm gonna go inside and go order some parts. But that's, I guess that's really all I got for you guys on this one. I can't really do much more with blue until I get these sensors in. That's the biggest thing holding us up right now with the wiring harness is sensors because I can't cut wire to length. I can't pin anything. I can't connect anything. I literally can't do anything but map out the harness like I just did. And I can't map out the rest of the harness till the rest of the stuff gets here. So that's where I'm gonna leave you guys on this one. I have a big surprise coming for you guys in the next video. So hopefully everyone is looking forward to that. Uh, there will probably be the next EG33 video next week just so that way I can get all my sensors in at once and we can just start going through and getting all like the sensor location, bracketry, all of that stuff knocked out at once. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you learned anything new, like mapping out a harness, mapping out a harness is actually really important. You want to do that. But 
If you guys like the video, you know what to do. I'm, I'm done rambling. I'm just rambling at this point. Like the video if you're not already subscribed and you want to be and you want to see our blue baru with the flat six swap live and breathe, then so be it. Hit that button. I'll put it in one of these corners. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next one, which is a video that I'm excited about. And it'll be a premiere video, which is always fun. I get to hang out in the chat with you guys while we watch it. But peace out, homies. Woo!